who's this guy? Out after the Korean War were orphaned. 
And I really just felt that you know, it was really important to include that. But getting back to your question, you know, um, I think for me, if you really want to understand the point of view of the character, then um, I thought in this instance that not understanding every word of the mother and would help you relate to the adoptee a little bit more. Yeah. And to make a shout out to Park Ji Young, who plays the mother, yeah. um, if you're curious to see other work that she's done, she's done a bunch of Kinky Duck films. Correct. Right? And yeah. she's, she's excellent. Yeah, the story behind that is really crazy because um, I had another person playing the mother, but she got really ill and uh, like she had to go to the hospital. So I literally met the character who played the mother on the day. Like they got her the day before. And um, you know, with my actors, I, I, I try to spend as much time with them to rehearse with them to give them a backstory and get really prepared for the character. But in this instance, she came that morning. And so I spent two hours with her giving a backstory about and we shot all those scenes in the same day. So like she killed it. Like I was like, whoa, I'm so glad my other actress got sick. <laughs> so yeah, I was just super happy, you know, how things turned out. And um, I don't know, after this question, I'll open it up to the floor. But of course, I know that the question that everyone wants to ask is, how did you find Esteban on? Oh, Sergio? <laughs> So to give you a little backstory in terms of how I casted it, I like working with non-actors a lot. And, um, and on top of that, the, um, the selection of the options in terms of Asian American actors are actually pretty limited, or Asian German or Asian Mexican. <laughs> and uh, you know, I worked with casting directors in Mexico and so on, but, or in South America, but I just couldn't find the actors. So I actually went on Facebook and I uh, did an open call on Facebook for anyone who wanted to act for an audition. So I gave the sides of the scripts and then they would rehearse, uh, memorize it and film it and upload it to YouTube and give it to us and then we filter through them. And, and uh, I found a lot of my actors that way. And uh, for example, the adoptee played by Rosalina Lee, played Chris, she had never acted a day in her life. Uh, Sergio actually found on YouTube. So, I was looking for the person who had that essence of Sergio, and I couldn't find him for the life of me. And then one day, my friend called me. He was like, "Dude, you have to look at this guy on YouTube. He's a vlog in Spanish, and he's really funny." And so I checked it out. And the moment, like, he just, I saw him. I was like, "Oh shit, it's Sergio!" <laughs> so I contacted him, and I was like, "Dude, you have to be in my movie." Blah blah blah. Um, Do you want to repeat the question? Oh yeah, so the question is what is the allure of working with non-actors for me? It's, um, I've worked with non-actors for a long time. And as a matter of fact, like my first film in 98, I worked with an actress who had never acted and she won um, the special pro uh, jury prize at Sundance for acting. And my thing is, I, I really encourage people to be themselves. Like when I work with non-actors, I really try to find actors who can play themselves. And what I do is teach them not to act, to really feel comfortable in front of the camera and have fun. But the truth is, I feel like we all act every day of our lives. You know, if it's with our boss or if it's with our girlfriend or if it's with our parents or whatever, there's an MO, a different MO. And what I try to do is make that as simple as possible for people to be conscious of how acting is uh, something we have in our everyday lives. And so luckily, like people like Sergio, like quite honestly, when we started working together, he was totally retarded, like he was not a good actor. But as I got him really comfortable in front of the camera, he just completely flourished and that was amazing. So yeah, like that's my thing is like, you know, it's like finding a diamond in the rough for me and especially if they match the character. So yeah. Yeah, the fight scene was pretty challenging. Because it started raining. And that was real rain. Um, which explains that little shot of the clouds coming over and like explaining how it starts raining. 
Um, but I mean, at the end of the day, every scene is a challenge because you just want it to be great. And um, you know, when you deal with Mother Nature, it's really hard um, because people pay thousands and thousands of dollars to reproduce rain, but that was free. And, uh, <laughs> you know, um, well, I, I think the biggest challenge overall, like in the entire movie, was to get finance because people didn't really understand the movie. I mean, it took me 16 years to get the money. And, you know, for years I just, like, imagined what this movie would be like and how I would love to make a movie with, like, normal Korean characters, you know? Like, I, I dreamt about it for years. And um, I would take it to Korea, and the Koreans would be like, well, who is this for? Is this for a Korean audience or an American audience? And I was just like, no, it's for everybody, you know? So I was super naive. <laughs> and in the States, they'd ask me the same question. Like, yeah, it's for everyone, you know? Come on out, you know? <laughs> it's global. And they'd just be like, well, at the end of the day, it's for Asians, but we don't get why it's in Korea. Like, you know, it's a John Hughes thing. Like, when you think about the concept of it all, it's kind of crazy, you know? If I pitched this to you in just words. And so, but I was lucky because finally, uh, I, I, I got some Chinese people to invest in it. <laughs> so I'm super grateful to my Chinese investors. And uh, yeah, I'm just glad I finally made it. But that was definitely the hardest thing was to pull together the finance of the movie. Which is, which is happening more and more with China investing in South Korean cinema. Yeah. For the, since we're in San Francisco, like two weeks ago in the Metreon, there was a film that was a Chinese film called So I Married an Anti Fan. Um, it's one of the trans and, uh, it featured a South Korean director and South Korean actors in it, but it was fully financed by the Chinese money. Um, in the third row here. Yeah, um, I love the movie. I thought it was perfect. Thank you. Um, but also, uh, the music was was spot on. And how much of that was consciously playing on things like um, Valley World, for example, or, yeah. or you know, where certain of the songs have certain cinematic <laughs> things attached to them, also, and it seemed like they they were. Even when they weren't something like taken or kind of quoting another film, yeah. they're just so perfect. I mean, I oh, thank you. Now, I, how did how did you choreograph?